So in this video, I'm going to show you how to do your grid project. And I'm actually going to take a step back to showing you how I'm choosing my photos. I talked about this already a little bit in one of the earlier videos, but I know it could be really helpful to see how another person uses Lightroom. So for this assignment, you do need nine photos. Right now I have imported um, 29 photos from when I visited this abandoned structure. Uh, so let's go through and I'm going to hit the F key to go into full screen and I'm going to try to make some pretty quick picks on my favorite photos and I'm going to use the one key to hit it to mark it as one star. So I have two that are similar here. I like this one better. I'm going to hit one star. Uh, I know I have some similar ones here. I think I'm going to go with this one, one star. Uh, slightly different exposure, framing. I know these are going to end up being cropped square, so I'm going to choose this one. All right, so that's all of them. So I'm going to hit F to get out of full screen again. And now I can come up here to attribute. If this isn't showing, if it looks like that, all you gotta do is click on attribute. And I'm gonna click on the one star. And now I'm down to 14 of 29 photos. So not too bad. Um, I need nine photos for this assignment. So I'm gonna move some of the photos that are similar around so I can see which ones are too similar and maybe I'll take out. Now, if you, a lot of you might start and try to do this and you're going to get this message. It says the currently selected source does not support custom order. And what I was trying to do was click and drag to move it to another place and it's saying that that's not going to work. That's because right now in the library the folder we're in is previous import. Okay, so what I actually want to be in is the, fo the folder down here. So these photos are on my hard drive and I have my different photos here. Let's see, which, where is it? Um, there's my folder there that these ones are actually in. So now that I'm in, in the folder where they're in, I can move these around freely and it'll move around. So again, I'm gonna come up to attribute. I'm gonna hit, um, the one star is selected because that's the last thing I had. So there we go. Now, I want to move these around. Let's see, this one is super similar to here. And if you want to see them all in one place, you can pull this thumbnails slider down and make them a little smaller. And I'm actually going to hide this side now that we're in the right folder by clicking on this arrow here. And now I can see them all. I know they're going to end up being, um, as you saw in the examples, in a grid of nine. And this is also a good time to get them in the order you want them in the grid. So out of these two, I actually like the second one better. So we have a couple of options. I can either hit zero and then this will leave the collection right now, or I can start choosing my final ones with a two star. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and do zero this time. So there's one, an overall view. Let's see what else we have. I know I definitely want that one in there. Um, I have a couple. Let's see, there's these two of the windows. I have some close-ups. Let's get these close-ups together so I can break it down. Um, this view isn't actually all that exciting after all, so let's hit zero on that. And let's see what I'm, I'm down to, 12 photos. I need to get rid of three more. Um, I think I'm going to keep this orange because we have the orange hat that I definitely want. So that'll give it another little hit of color. I'm going to keep the purple. That's another little hit of color. Um, oh, I have the two windows. So I'm going to go back to full screen. Which one do I like best? Mm, I guess I'll stick with this one for now. So I'm going to hit zero and this one's going to go away. I'm going to hit F to get out of full screen. And what's interesting, now I have these close-ups with the spray paint, so these close-ups aren't as necessary, I think. Without, uh, all right, so I'm gonna take out one of these, hit zero, 
go back to my grid view here. And what do I have now? 10. So I need to get rid of one photo. Which one do I not like? Well, you know what? I think I'm going to start editing and then cropping. And then maybe I'll have to make a decision once I'm in there. So I'm going to do some edits. And at this point in the video, I'm going to speed everything up. So um, this video doesn't become super long. So go ahead and hold off for a second. Oh, before I do that, though, I do want to show you that for cropping for a square, um, you are going to want to um, come over here to crop and go to one by one. That's a square crop. And now you can move it around and see exactly where you want to crop it. Now, oh, hold on before I do this. I'm sorry. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, I guess. Well, yeah, I am. Let me go ahead and pause and go back real quick. Okay, I'm back in my library. <clears throat> and so now that I have these here, um, what I want you to do is actually make a collection with these photos. And the great thing about Lightroom is you can make these virtual copies. So it doesn't make an actual copy of the file, but it makes a virtual copy so you can do edits to it. And um, not change up the original file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this first photo, hold down shift and click on the second photo and it, that selects all of these photos. I'm going to come over here to collections and hit the plus sign and click on create collection. Alright, so now I'm going to name it, I'm going to call this which is house grid project. Okay. And if you notice down here, I have checked include selected photos and make new virtual copies. So I'm going to click create. And now I have this witch's house grid project. Now if I go back over here, you'll notice that now I have duplicates. So here's the first photo and it says one of two. So this one, you see there's a little like page turn. This is actually the virtual copy of this photo. So I can do whatever I want to do to this photo and this one is gonna stay exactly the same. All right, so let's go back to the, here we are, oh, wrong grid project. That's a different one. Let's see, uh, where'd it go? There it is, which is house grid project. So these are the photos I actually wanna do my edits to. All right, now I'm gonna go to develop and do some editing. Okay, so here's an example why, um, you know, you want to take some extra photos. I realize if I go to crop this as a square, it's, you know, going to cut off some of this. So I'm going to go back to my library real quick. Go to my attributes, turn off. Oh, actually, I need to come back over here because that other photo is not in my collection. Remember the one I said I wasn't going to use because my husband was sticking out in ah, this one. Well, I can actually crop this one as a square and still have the full arch. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this over here into the witch's house um, grid project. And now it is going to be in this collection also. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, take this out of the collection. I can drag it out. I can also, let's see, um, right click on it and go down to remove from collection. All right. And I will continue editing now. Okay, so now I just want to take a quick pause and talk about, um, as I'm editing this photo, I remember when I talked about um, the histogram, and I have a lot of information over here to the left, and I did take up my exposure and my shadows, but the thing is, is that this type of curve in your histogram doesn't mean that something's wrong. It means that there's not a lot of super light areas in the photo, and if you're taking a photo where 
there's not a lot of light areas, like in this case, then this is what you exactly what you would expect to see. Now, if um, let's say I had with a model here and she was wearing a white dress, then there would be something white in the photo, and then there would be information right here, or at least I would want information over here. Then I, it would be a little bit easier to tell like how technically dark or light it should be. And I also, if you guys have been watching this far, um, you might notice that I'm not doing a whole lot of editing at this point. I'm not really touching many of these sliders. And it really depends um, on what type of shoot it is. This is a nature shoot. This is in the middle of a park. Um, it's not something that I'm really getting really crazy with on any type of editing. So the editing is pretty quick and fast for this stuff. There's going to be other instances where the editing is way more um, intense, where you are playing with a lot more of these sliders. It really just depends on what type of shoot it is and honestly, you know, what you type of photos you want to have. I could take this clarity slider and take it all the way up and make it, you know, really intense. Um, I could bring up this texture slider and make it really like that super HDR grungy look. I could take the exposure down. Eh, yeah, it doesn't look that great. Um, <laughs> now I am, if you've noticed, adding a vignette to a lot of them, and that's just to bring the edges in. Now, that might be your look, but for me personally, that's not my look. That's a bit over-edited. Um, if you go back into <laughs> my Instagram to when I was first posting in there years and years ago, a lot of my photos did look like this, and this is classic what a lot of people would call over editing. Some people, that's just their style. Um, this is not what I like my photos to look like, especially for this very natural type of shoot. Um, now, if this was maybe um, a Halloween shoot and I had someone in like a, a witch's costume or some kind of creepy costume, I might go more this route. It just really depends on what you want to say. But this isn't me now. So if you remember from your history panel, this shows everything you've done and I can take a step back to where I want it to be. And actually, let's go back real quick to that beginning. And I'm gonna hit the backslash button so you can see the before and the after. So you can see how crazy intense that change is. Okay, so I'm gonna come back, let's see, over here about where I like it and I am gonna add a little bit Okay, and I'm going to use my backslash to look at it before and after, and as you can see, I've brightened the whole thing and then added the vignette so that the middle is really where your attention goes to instead. All right, so now I'm back down to my nine photos, and I am going to go ahead and move on. So we're going to the print tab now. I've got my print tab here. I'm going to click here, and this is actually really great for um, photographers who are going to go, um, we're going into like portraiture where you need to make like, let's say, um, a you need to print a sheet of photos where there's a, uh, you know, wallet size or a five by seven or something. And there's all kinds of presets and templates here. As I move over these, you can see it'll change here. So, you know, here's six wallets and a four by six. So if I wanted to do that, let's click on there. Then now I have this sheet where it's printing all of these. Um, so many different options you can do. A contact sheet, you know, if you have a whole bunch of photos that you need to show somebody. And this actually also shows you the name of the photo. So someone can go through and say, yes, I like this one. I don't like this one. Um, that's what I use this most uh, mostly for is when I do have a client that is looking at multiple photos, I can send them a contact sheet for the full shoot and they can tell me which ones they like, which ones they don't like. Now today we're gonna be playing around with a little bit differently. We're actually gonna make um, a file, let's say that you could post for social media or something. So, so um, over here on the right side are all of the extra options for what you want to do with this. Now, when you open this up, I was already making some, so the dimensions have already changed. But when you open this up, it'll probably be at an 8.5 by 11 sheet. So the first thing you really need to do 
is go down, scroll to the bottom of the options panel, and go to print a job, select a JPEG file where it says the print option. So we have the print job, print to, and instead of printer, which is probably where it's going to be set, ah, there's the 8.5 by 11 setup, I'm going to go to JPEG file. And once I go to JPEG file, I can actually put in custom dimensions. So I'm going to click on this custom file dimensions. And now I'm going to, I'm going to enter in 8 inches by 8 inches. And now I have a square format. Okay. Um, I also want you to go ahead and change the file re resolution to 135. That's just so it's, um, so Canvas doesn't get overwhelmed with all of the projects you're going to end up uploading over time. So, and actually, yeah, we'll just leave it back for now. It's fine. All right. So I have all of these selected. And if they're not selected for you, you just have to click the first one, hold down shift, and click the last one. And now they will all be selected. All right. So I'm going to start coming down here and playing with these different options. Um, I'm not going to worry about zoom to fill. I'm not going to worry about rotate to fit. I'm not going to worry about repeat one photo per page. Now this is an option you do have. There's a stroke border. So you can add a border and make it as thick as you want to each photo. Okay, let's say, eh, I'll give it a little bit. Of, and you can change the color if you wanted to also. So if I click here, you can see we have a gradient of black to white. And if I go over here where it says hex uh, and take this slider up, you'll see all of a sudden I have a bunch of colors and they get from uh, not saturated at all to very saturated. So if I wanted to go for um, whatever color, you could totally pick a different color if you wanted to, depending on what you're doing. Maybe I'll go with this like brownish color. Okay, I'm gonna hit the X to get out of this. And now we can play with other things such as um, margins, page grid, cell spacing, cell size. And this is what is going to really start making that page grid happen. So first, um, I'm going to go ahead and leave the margins 25 by 25 inches, 0.56. This 0.56 is pretty standard for printing. Usually the bottom edge of a, of a page, it won't print past 0.56. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave that. If you wanted to, you could change it up though. Okay, why not? Let's make them all even. 0.25. Okay. And now for the rows, if I have nine photos, I need three rows and three columns. So I'm going to click here and click three. And I'm going to click here and click three. Okay. And so now I have them spaced out like that. Um, you could also take the slider up and down. So for the cell spacing, this is where it's going to bring them back together. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these down like this. Okay, looking pretty good so far. Um, we have guides on, or we can turn guides off if you needed to look at the margins, rulers, and such. That's not necessary, but you can. We have a page background color, so you can change the background color. Same thing with the colors and such. So let's say I'm going to go ahead and go with maybe black. I'm going to bring this up. Maybe I'll go with like a dark brown also. I don't know. This is totally up to you. This is where you can be creative with exactly what you are shooting and decide what you want. And eh, that's okay. I'm actually like a little bit more of a simplistic thing. So I'm going to turn off the border also. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So we have the background color. You can add stuff like identity plates, which will have, you know, writing and such, but I'm not worried about that. I'm going to turn off this photo info and that takes off that DSC 225, whatever the, the file name. Now you could put in different stuff for this. If you were doing a contact sheet for a client, um, date, exposures, titles, captions, all kinds of stuff. But we're going to go ahead and take that off for now. Okay. And oh, I like that, but I do think I want a little bit of space. So I'm going to pull up the spacing a little bit here. And here, I want them to be exactly the same. Let's go 
0.1 and 0.1. Okay. All right, not too shabby. Looking good. So there's your print uh, project. Now at this point, you might want to move some of these around. So I'm looking at this. I've got the orange next to the orange. Um, I kind of, I kind of like it's starting with this, although it might be, you know, your, your eye usually goes straight to the middle. So actually I think I'm going to move this one to the middle. So this is one, two, three, four. The fifth photo is the middle. So I'm going to take this and drag it over here to the fifth photo. Shift. I'm going to click on this first one and shift and click again to see them all. Okay. I like that there. You get the orange and the orange. Let's see the window. It's kind of looking that way. Mm, maybe I'll move some stuff around. Let's see. Oh, I think I'll take the orange and move them across from each other. So in opposite corners, maybe. So this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, the seventh photo needs to be the other orange. Uh, okay, click, hold down shift, click. All right, that's there. Oh, I messed this up a bit. Let's see, that needs to be the fifth. Okay, I like that smiley face there. I like the window. Okay, I do think I want to move this because we have close up, close up, far away. So I want to switch it up a little bit. So I'm going to move these around. Okay. And now it's kind of cool. We have the window, the middle, and then the door that's kind of similar. These two are really similar to each other. So I think I want to change that. Maybe I'll switch these two. Let's see. So I need to move the purple to this side and the stairs to this side. Okay. Um, I'm liking it. I'm liking it. Mm, maybe I'll actually start with the smile right down here and have the stairs leading into this area. So that means my stairs was number four. I'm going to move it to the number one spot. And this one is going to move to the number four spot. Okay. All right. I think I'm happy with this setup. So now that I have this ready, I'm ready to finish it up. I'm going to go ahead and hit print to file. And let me just make sure I went through everything with this. Yep. Okay. Print to file. And then you can decide where to put it. Uh, you can, you know, leave it in there and you're with all the other folders. Um, if you want to, for the class, since this is for a class, you might want to already have a folder. So let's say I come here and I have my photo 12. Um, I have a photo 12 folder, project files. And I'm going to go ahead and make a new fold. Oh, not a new folder. I'm going to go ahead and just save it here because this is something that you might want to be doing to keep all of your photo 12 stuff together. So here I'm going to put my last name, redondo underscore grid project. And because I have multiple of these, I'm actually going to call it witch's house, but you don't have to do this part. Witch's house. And then I'm going to hit save. And now it is saved and ready. Well, if you see up here, it says preparing print job. Once this is done going all the way through, then it will be saved to the location that you asked it to be. Let's go there real quick. Number 12, project files. And once this is all done, it should pop up in here. Oh, there it is and ready to upload into Canvas. All right, I hope this was helpful for you guys. Enjoy and have fun.